I have to say that as much as I love making videos, audio is just an amazing and easy to start format to get your content out and connect with an audience. Sure, the commute times to work seem to be mere seconds with many of us working from home now, but the need for information, storytelling, and inspiration still has its place. You just might not need it in the HOV lane. Based on all the inquiries I've received in the last few months, it sounds like you feel the same, and I want to help you start your podcast the easiest way that I know how, and with the technology that you likely already have in your pocket. What I'm sharing with you can certainly be accomplished on a computer or a tablet, but one of the reasons I want to highlight the iOS devices is that GarageBand is just one of the easiest ways to get started, and you'll find this already in your iPad or your iPhone's toolbox. However, yes, this can also be accomplished on Android, but with that use case, I would recommend an app called Ophonic. Now after procuring the iPhone, what we're going to need is a microphone. Now any USB powered dynamic or condenser mic should work and for this video we're featuring the Blue Yeti, which is one of the more popular microphones. If you have questions about choosing a dynamic versus a condenser microphone, I'll link up a video I did on this comparison. Next up, you'll need the lightning to USB adapter. I'll link up a couple of options here, but I am using Apple's accessory. One thing to note, I will advise getting the lightning to USB adapter that also has the power plug in option because some of the microphones may require a little more power than the iPhone is able to accommodate. And you'll often see this message if that's the case. Plugging in your iPhone via the adapter should allow you to continue to use your microphone, but it's also peace of mind that your phone is charging while recording. As a side note, I do want to make an honorable mention for the lightning to three and a half millimeter headphone adapter that Apple used to include in the box but I suppose it's been left out in recent iPhone iterations to keep the box thin and light. You can use the highly recommended Rode Video Micro plugged in via the adapter, but do keep in mind that for this to work on your phone, you'll need a TRS to TRRS patch cable, which of course is in the description below. Now as far as optional equipment, I do recommend an inexpensive Bluetooth mouse that you can pair to your iPhone because, let's be honest people, you can certainly edit by touching the screen, but if you can make things easier on yourselves, why not? I'll link up a couple of inexpensive options, but do double check that your mouse doesn't already have Bluetooth functionality, like the one I'm using here, which is the Logitech MX Master 3. An additional option to help you with your post-production is that you can connect your iPhone to an external monitor or a television via Lightning to HDMI adapter, but this certainly is not a must have, and I would not encourage you to spend more money to get up and running, because I really just want you to get started and this whole accumulation of technology just gets in the way. Now, as we're getting set up, make sure to turn on airplane mode on your iPhone before taking off on your podcast because we don't need any interruptions on this flight. And unfortunately, this is not a call-in show. Connect your microphone via the lightning to USB adapter and plug in the phone via the charging port if needed. If a screen pops up about monitoring your audio, I would actually cancel this feature out so as to avoid any loopback audio while recording but I would recommend monitoring your audio via the headphone out jack on the microphone. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to go over to GarageBand and open that up. And then what we wanna do is create a new project or create a new song. So we're gonna click that. Now what comes up for me is audio recorder, but you may see something else like some kind of instrument that comes up, just find the audio recorder and then click voice. And then once you are in GarageBand, then you will come over here, click this down to where it says, and it may default to lead vocals. And if you want to sound like a lead singer of a rock band, great. But otherwise I would click on this, scroll down to narrator, because I think that's the best sound for podcasts. Now we're gonna come over here to the plus button and click this and you'll see section A and eight bars. Now, really what that does is it just kind of creates a loop. So we don't want a loop. We just want to keep recording. So click automatic for that and then done. And then we will get rid of the metronome. And then for compressor, I tend to just push the compressor to about 50%. And what that's going to do is try to level things out for you, but you may have to play with this a little bit based on your voice. So just kind of mess around with that in your pre-production before you get going and just see what you like. And then we're gonna come over here and click this and you will get the track view. And this will allow you to kind of see like what this is gonna look like when you're recording. And another thing too is that we're gonna add some voice and some 
audio loops, but let's actually just add the voice real quick and then we'll go into the audio loops. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the show that doesn't exist except for this YouTube tutorial. Let's get a word from our sponsor, and I will catch you right back here in just a moment. All right, so then in track view, we can play that back. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the show that doesn't exist except for this YouTube tutorial. Let's get a word from our sponsor, and I will catch you right back here in just a moment. Now, the beauty about GarageBand is that if that didn't cut as I wanted, what I can do is drag that here and have that cut. And then what we can do here is go over to the loop section, and you will see a ton of loops that you can just scroll through, find a song that you might want in your show, some kind of intro or mid roll or outro. For me though, what I ended up doing is I found a song that I really liked on Epidemic Sound. And so I can come over here to files, click this and then drag it in to the timeline here. And what I can do is move this over here. And what I wanna do is this is a really long song. So what we're gonna do is come over here and we're gonna kinda of cut that. So we're going to split, drag down the scissors, and get rid of this. And then what we can also do is come over here. We can even change this to a different icon. So that looks like a microphone. If we want it to look like something different, sound effects, and just pick that, done. And something else that we can do to the music, give it a little bit of echo. So we can come up to the, the track control here, the settings. We'll go into the control here, scroll down, give like a little bit of echo so it kind of has like this reverb, but we could do a little reverb. And then and it's kind of got that reverb, so, or that echo rather. And then I can go right back in to my vocal track. So we'll make sure that we're activating the vocal track. Welcome back everyone to the show that doesn't exist except for this YouTube tutorial. And hopefully you're finding out some really good information to get your podcast started right now. All right. And then we'll see here that we had, didn't that didn't start exactly as we wanted. So then we can just drag here. Welcome back, everyone, to the show that doesn't exist except for this YouTube tutorial. And hopefully you're finding out some really good information to get your podcast started right now. Now, of course, you can add more loops in there, add an outro if you want to. You can just keep adding tracks down here, but essentially this is really easy. So you can add another uh, audio source, any kind of instrument or anything like that, and really make this as complex as you want to. I would just start as simple as possible just to get going. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this. So we're going to go into my songs and we will rename it YouTube Tutorial. Okay, so now that we have renamed it, we are going to then click on it again, and we are gonna click Share. And so we are going to choose Song. It's gonna to default to high quality, which I think that's fine. I think that's where we need to be. I wouldn't focus so much on the other options. We're gonna click share. Now, of course, I do have a Mac, so I can airdrop that over to my Mac if I want to. However, if you do not, then you can just save to the files of your iPhone. So it'll just be in your file manager, wherever you choose to put it. So it's exporting the song into a format that you can upload for your podcast platform. And of course, I can put it in GarageBand File Transfer 
or uh, create a, a folder. So if I want to create a new folder, I can create a folder here and just say podcasts. Done. So then I can just put it there. So then when I'm ready to upload to my platform, I can just upload it right from my iPhone. Now let's actually talk briefly about a platform. All right, so I've got a couple of podcast host options. And what we mean by podcast host is this is the place where your file is going to live. Now, if you're someone who has a website already, do not even think about putting your podcast on there and streaming from there because likely your web host is not set up for that. And so people downloading that information and you uh, going over the bandwidth limits is a likely possibility. These podcast hosts are set up for this. And of course, as you see, Anchor is free. So you can actually upload the podcast that you've already recorded in GarageBand and then saved as a file. Or what you can actually do here in Anchor, you can record directly into your phone. Just like we had talked about in the video here, you can plug in your external microphone and then you can even edit uh, through Anchor if you'd like. I have personally used Anchor myself not to record and edit, but I have had some podcasts hosted here and I think it's actually a, a fine platform and you can even set it up so that if you want to monetize your podcast, when you get to that, that point in your podcast, you can certainly go into uh, a feature that helps you get started monetizing, but first create that content, connect with your audience. Now I have also used personally Libsyn. Now this is not free, but as you can see, it starts at just $5 a month. And this is also a place where you can upload your podcast and uh, essentially just have it live here. So what that really means is if we can come over here and you will see that getting your podcast in all the top direct directories. So you have Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, so on and so forth. So it takes that RSS feed and it automatically pushes that out to all of those places where people are going to download and or stream your podcast. So essentially it's like a one and done. Once you have created the file, uploaded the file, allow these platforms to then push that out. It doesn't mean that they are promoting it, but what it does is that it allows you to take that one file and distribute it. So think about distribution. So distribute it across all of these platforms. And of course, it is up to you to promote your podcast on whatever social media platforms or however you promote your show. Hopefully this information was helpful for you to get started right now. Go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking those faces. I really appreciate your time and attention. I'm gonna continue to create that value for you here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.